Now, were you paying close attention? What was this plant that we just described? That should look a little familiar. Well, dahlia. Hmm? Dahlia? yes, very good. That's the common garden dahlia. Now, the real story, the real discovery. Spanish missionaries in 1789 collected seeds of this plant in Mexico, sent them back to the royal gardens of Madrid, where it flowered in October of 1790. <coughs> and then the great Spanish botanist A.J. Cavanias, recognizing the plant as new to science, named the common garden dahlia, Dahlia pinnata. And he illustrated it here. Here it is. Here's the Latin description. Here we go. Habitat Mexico. Here's a little larger illustration in his publication. There you can see his name and initial delineated. Now he wasn't really a redoute at all, but he did, a, 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 he did it anyway. So uh, now, interestingly enough, common garden dahlia was lost in cultivation at the Royal Gar Gardens in Madrid. Apparently the horticulturists, the gardeners, did not have enough knowledge about the growing requirements, about the environment, about the soils, about the temperature, and it was lost in cultivation until the great explorers Humboldt and Bonplan returned, having visited those same areas, collected seeds of the common garden dahlia. They really loved that plant and they brought it back, reintroducing the plant into cultivation. And Josephine being one of their sponsors, yes, she was able to acquire seed and it was through Josephine that dahlias finally burst upon the European world. And by the 1830s, the dahlia frenzy approached that of tulip mania some two centuries earlier. And if it was grown at Malmaison, it was illustrated by the great artist. Yes, Redoute had his hand in it every step of the way. Some of those beauties right here in this gallery. Now that little picture of a garden seed catalog, dahlias on the cover reminds me that, you know, too seldom do we contem contemplate the origins of plants that we grow in our gardens, eat, or value for their medicinal purposes. But some of the commonest plants were introduced from the wild at great personal sacrifice, usually from remote places and often at considerable expense. Now, real quick little comparison of some paintings by Redoute and another artist, because I want you to sort of be the judge of Redoute here. Of the hundreds of different species illustrated and painted by Redoute, several are native or naturalized right here in North America, some of them right here in the local flora. Now, think back, despite its merits as an art form, botanical illustration is mainly an aid to science, okay? The primary purpose is not <coughs> art, but scientific accuracy, okay? Now, so let's look at some of these species here real quickly. We're about to wrap up here. <clears throat> now, we're going to compare some line drawings, which are wonderful tools for the botanist. We're going to compare those black and white line drawings with some of the beautiful watercolors by Redoute. Now, Redoute, he was able to combine science with his art. Okay, so I want you to look at a few of these, and um, these are drawings by other botanists, and these are Redoute's, okay? So from my perspective, as a botanist, I've been able to use Redoute's drawings to be accurate enough, to be beautiful enough, to use them as aids for identification. Just a few of them here. This is the Polyanthus narcissus. The inflorescence, or the group of flowers as we call it, the botanist inflorescence, is four to eight flowers. Here the botanist or the artist, the black and white line drawing has four. Here's Redoute, there's two, four, six, eight. Who do you appreciate? Yeah, Redoute, very careful to, to not add another one just to maybe do, maybe it looks better with nine or whatever. Very careful to follow the science. Look at this beauty here. Now this is a hybrid here of a, of a color and a black and white. A little outline in the background here, but here's Redoute's tiger lily. And this is the Carolina lily. Look at the difference here. Look at the body color. Look at the sheen. Look at the depth. Look at the, just, it jumps off of that screen at you. This is very nice, but it doesn't seem to have that romantic feel like this watercolor here does. But you can see all the floral details here. See all the petals, the sepals, stamen, pistil, all the parts. 
even the flower fruit here in the axles of the leaves. And of course, Josephine had every known rose growing at her garden at the time. Carolina rose. Here's Cherokee rose. Beautiful and nice drawing that illustrates. This is the prairie rose, a native one of our native roses here in North America. One of the key characters that botanists use on this plant, I've got it enlarged here. This is the part of the leaf called the petiole. And this little part here is called stipules. And this particular species, the stipules are united in circling and closing the petiole for one half or more of the way. Every detail included there. Nothing left out at all. The dogwood, so careful to turn a leaf to see the underside so that you would know what the undersurface looks like. Details in the fruit, the flower. Look at the back side of the petals. Actually, bracts, not really truly petals, but that's a botanical thing. Look at the beautiful magnolia. Very nice detail over here, redite. Very, very wonderful detail as well. Here's black oaks. Now, you are familiar with white oaks and black oaks. Do you know one of the differences that makes a black oak versus a white oak? It is this little thing right here, this little spine, this little tip that exerts beyond the leaf margin of this vein here, okay? And that makes this a black oak. White oaks do not have that little extension. And so Redite, the artist has got it over here, but you think the artist would leave such, such a thing as that important out? Absolutely not. Very careful to include it all, even the buds. Look at it. the, the uh, <coughs> uh, cone, I mean the acorn and the cup here, one with and without. And then Macrocarpa, our big um, burr oak. Look at the fringe detail there. A couple of wonderful reditees in the collection here at Mr. Raiders. All right, wrapping up, closing down here. So, <clears throat> for beauty, for pleasure. For science, for posterity. Redite immortalized hundreds of plants. Call it art, call it science. It was Leonardo da Vinci who coined the rather apt phrase, drawing is science. In his 81 years of life, Redoute painted and illustrated over 1,800 species, contributed over 50 botanical books, and hundreds to the Royal Vellum Collection of France. His career reflected the scientific spirit of the time. He explored new fields of inquiry and disseminated information, information gathered by the elite for the benefit of a wider public by means of the print medium. He was a brilliant artist, an artistic phenomenon. Wolfred Blunt, author and scholar of botanical art, used these words to describe Redoute's technique. Pure watercolor, graduated with infinite subtlety, and very occasionally touched with body color to suggest sheen is Redoute's universal practice. The words of a scholar, here are the words used by the master himself. Je crois que je suis arrivé à obtenir un succès dans la triple conjonction de l'exactitude, la composition et la couleur, l'union desquelles est la seule façon d'amener l'iconographie végétale à la perfection. He did speak French. <laughs> and those French words are these words. I believe I have managed to succeed in the triple conjunction of exactitude, composition, and color, the union of which is the only means of bringing plant iconography to perfection. So what else can one possibly say? He left this lasting legacy. His art will go on, his science will go on. For over 200 years, Redoute's paintings have touched the hearts and lives of kings and queens, emperors, empresses, artists and art lovers and scientists alike. His botanical drawings, for over 200 years, Redoute's paintings Yes, have touched the hearts. His pa paintings live on in places of honor, in palaces, in private homes, museums. His work was reproduced by expert printmakers in subtly rendered color stippled engravings, appended with learned botanical descriptions, bound in great books, and printed in limited editions to be distributed as gifts by Napoleon I to dignitaries across Europe as an expression of all that was magnificent in that French culture. Yes, his botanical drawings <coughs> stand as aesthetic masterpieces, Timeless in their quality. Near and far, wherever Redite paintings are, 
Go and see just one time. And let that feeling of beauty and detail last you a lifetime. Forever after, when you see the art and science of Redoute, I hope that you will, whether that be in these beautiful reproductions, fine china, books, note cards, postcards, I hope that you will think of the explorers and discoverers behind those beautiful plants. And I hope that you will remember the enthusiastic and generous patroness of botany, Empress Josephine, who poured out untold sums of money in the purchase, cultivation, and publication of some of the most choice flowers in magnificent folios. But most of all, I hope that you will see a gentle painter painting best what he absolutely loved most, flowers and more flowers. Stanley Marcus once said, in relation to art, many of us look but fail to see. Folks, don't be like the many who come to a gallery like this and fail to really see the significance. That if you look close and you look just a little closer, you will see science in that ravishingly beautiful art. Botanical illustration, floral art, truly is for the botanist, the art lover, the adventurer, the discoverer in all of us. Sadly, few people know of the existence of these beautiful treasures, but if public interest is aroused, perhaps more opportunity will be given for their public display. There are lots of credits, lots of acknowledgments. First, Bruce Museum of Arts and Science in Connecticut there in the Kimball Art Museum, of which Mr. Rader provided some original reditees for. That was 2002-2003. That was the fir first exhibition really of reditee in America. The New York Botanical Garden did an exhibition. Brit and then a Raider Galleries just last September had a fantastic exhibition in Fort Worth for which we are very grateful. Many individuals. And you know, <clears throat> where I give this program, I'm usually giving people a hint as where they might go see some Raider Tays. All you have to do is step across the hall and see some of these beautiful works. So well, you don't have very far. You don't have to travel to New York or to uh, here to New... Well, you're already here. So... Um, <laughs> Now, I want to just share one slide with you here. Let that pass through there, and here we go. All right. So what's the connection between this room and our great artist? Well, they did make an acquaintance. So 1828, Redoute, or Joseph, yeah, Pierre Joseph Redoute, receives a visitor there in Paris. And oh, look at this here, who rather noticed... Uh, who, rather noticed the clothes of on a man's back was interested to see that this visitor was wearing the fringed buckskin jacket of an American woodsman depicted in the tales and the settlers in America and that visitor was John James Audubon now Audubon had called on Redoute with letters of introduction hoping to get some of these French wealthy people to subscribe to his wonderful uh, works on his birds Audubon birds of America well, they became friends, and uh, they spent quite a bit of time together. And then as a result, here's something worth reading here. Redoute was so enthralled with Audubon's art that he lavished him with the most valuable art he could give, a volume of the roses. Audubon was extremely impressed, and late that night wrote a letter to his wife, Lucy. This I really love, of which the following is an excerpt. Found an old Redoute at his painting, the size of my portfolio surprised him, and when I opened the work, he examined it most carefully. He gave me nine paintings of the choice of most beautiful flowers and promised to send another volume of the roses. Now, my Lucy, this will be a great treat for thee, fond of flowers as thy art. When you see us these roses, thy eyes will feast on the finest you can imagine. So, the two were great friends. The two were related in, in the love of nature the love of painting wildflowers, of painting animals. Thank you very much.